Hey guys, Janet Jenin here with Grizznator. So today I wanted to get jump on here and do you a quick video about suggested gear. And by gear, I mean clothing. Um, we can go over some other gear at another time, but right now I've got some clothing in mind. Um, we have fall season coming up here just within a few weeks. And I'm getting lots of questions, emails, text messages, calls about gear list. And uh, with the gear list, it's always about clothing. They want to know, do you require the same brands that you have on there? No, we don't require you to have the same exact brands that we do. A lot of our gear is very expensive. Some of it is more reasonably priced. I try to give you good examples of what we use, what we like, what we have tested for years, and then know that it works and it fits for what we do. Now, by no means do you have to have the same exact stuff that we have. It's just a suggestion. That's the reason why I say a suggested gear list. Um, because it's going to make your hunt a lot better if you are better prepared, if you do have the things that we have suggested you have. But within that, you don't have to have every single thing that we have in regards to you may be a person that just doesn't get as cold as some. You may be a person that gets colder than some. So this will give you a good layout of what, um, what we suggest your gear look like. And with doing so, the most important part, I would say, of a gear list is the foundation. Just like with a house and building a house, you want a good foundation. With your gear list, having a great base layer is going to start you off in the right direction. And it's also going to give you a lot of flexibility at being able to add layers on top of that. And on very hot days, just having um, your, your long underwear as your top, it's totally fine. So depending upon what the climate is outside, what's going on with weather-wise, uh, if it's raining, if it's cloudy, if it's snowing, if it's sunny, if we're hunting by glaciers. Depends on whether you want to be able to add gear to take gear off. So we're going to go with a layering system so that you can be able to easily do that and um, get to a comfortable hunt. So now when I talk about base layers and I talk about it being the most important part, it just so happens that I left my base layer stuff at home. So all of my examples that I had for you, I'm here at the office doing this filming and they're all at home. So we're going to have to do a whole nother day uh, or video on base layers. And it'll be able to give you a good example of what lightweight, medium weight, and heavyweight is. So for these hunts that you're doing with us, I really suggest that you at least have a medium grade weight to a heavyweight. Um, if you're the kind of person that just really gets overheated a lot, you probably don't need the heavy then. If you're a person that gets really cold a lot, heavy grade is, heavy weight will be great then for you. But medium grade or higher will actually give you um, a really good base. So I'll do that video another day. Like I said, for now, we're going to go ahead and hop back here. Um, I've got a lot of stuff laid out to give you really good examples. So we're just going to pretend we've got our base layer all set up. So medium to heavy grade base layer. And then from that, you want to be able to start adding on layers. So um, in Alaska, we have a saying that says cotton kills. Don't have, don't bring cotton. Don't bring cotton socks. You do not want cotton uh, as base layers. Really keep it into synthetic. Fleece is really a great option, guys. Um, the fleece really is nice on your skin. It's going to be comfortable. It's going to be quiet. So think of, um, and it's going to keep you really warm. So think of fleece. I really highly suggest is like your second base layer to some type of fleece. So this is a really cool, this happens to be a hoodie. Now you don't have to have a hood. Um, I would probably suggest not a hood if I had the option in this, but whenever I found it, um, I, I grabbed this one because it, it met all of my other requirements. It has nice pockets where if I was a nice warm day and I didn't need a rain, uh, layer on the outside. And if it was sunny and nice and this right here, this one's actually pretty thick. You can get some much thinner fleece, um, for your second layer would be totally fine too. 
you don't have to have it as thick as this but this does offer a really nice thick layer that you can easily go out and hunt in this and your long underwear and be good to go a lot of times but the hood could get in your way it doesn't for me i just pull it out and it it's fine and it's kind of nice too if it is really windy out or we're gonna go from one area to the next i can pull up that hood i do have hoods on a lot of other stuff too so it's not necessary for your second base layer but it's it's not a bad thing like it, i'm not gonna pass it out because of it but um again this does have nice big pockets the pocket goes all the way through um but yeah this is this is a really good very reasonably priced too. Grundon's really has up their game and I have to say that they've got a really good selection of anywhere from the base layers up to your mid layers and um, your coats and then also your rain gear. They've really, you could go to Grundon's and I promise you stop for, shop for everything you need. Um, stay away from the brightly colored stuff. I don't want you bringing rain gear that's like neon colored, which we're going to get into rain gear in a minute. but. So just stick with your neutrals, your blacks, your greens, your tans, your browns, those kind of colors. Um, you will see whenever we're going over gear list, I don't have camo. Like this is my camo. Why do we have to have some funky pattern all over? I can tell you that you don't have to. Now, is it great for sometimes breaking you up? Sure, but I can get where I need to be with what I've got here. And it's a lot of the times, much better equipped for the weather and the conditions that I'm hunting under than the, the companies that um, make the camo pattern. So don't be afraid to pass up your camo pattern for something that's more mountaineering fishing uh, style for here in Alaska. So this is a really good second layer coat. And with second layer, I'm also going to go for these. These are more of kind of like a jogger style. I like the fact that they fit a little closer to you. On me, they are do have still quite a bit of room, but down at the leg, you'll see they're more of a jogger style. So while they are a second layer, I can easily get them underneath all of my other gear and I'm not be too bulky and, and build up. This is made again by Grundens. It's got the fleece in the inside, so it's nice and comfortable on you. It keeps you nice and warm. and. This one is not as heavy as the, the sh top I was showing you before. So Grundon's really, again, they've got a great layering system built up on their website um, for very reasonably priced. I'm gonna show you too, I'll put in some clips, some different other pants that I would suggest. Um, I'll give you a few different ones that, that I would highly recommend, I guess. But uh, this one right here, you could wear during the day if it was sunny out and you were getting hot and didn't want to have all your other gear on and didn't necessarily need rain gear on that day. You could totally be hunting in this and not need anything else, um, which is what I do whenever it's like that. So while we're on the second kind of gear, second layer, I should say, this coat right here is another great layering piece. If it was a day where you were not going to need something just extremely heavy and you wanted to go with a lighter ring shell, then something might, like this might be more up your alley. It's very light. So something like this is a great next base layer. This um, is made from polyester and nylon. Whenever you think of it as a down alternative base, they are very lightweight, which makes it a great layering piece. Um, they do add a lot of warmth to you. I would suggest staying away from any kind of down though. So down can be very warm, it can be very great, but just here in Alaska, we tend to have some wetter climates and especially during our fall goat season, like which is coming up, um, it tends to rain. So if it were down, it's just gonna be a pain in the butt to have to get dry where this other will get dry really quick. It's gonna be easily dried. Um, you're not gonna lose your fill and you're not gonna to have to worry about a washing conditions with, down is just a lot more, um, let's just say fussy with all of that. So having some kind of next um, layer might be up your alley. Now, if you're the kind of person that you get really hot easily, you may not want that. But if you're gonna go for like a lighter shell rain gear, 
that may be something that you want to look at. It's also great to have that kind of an option to put in your bag that if you do uh, get just a little bit cooler, you can add on that layer. And especially if you are going for like a lighter fleece, then you may be interested in something like that. So this right here, this is made from Mountain Hardware. This is going to be more like your thin shell rain gear. Um, I've got some pants here too from Mountain Hardware. These are some of Greg's. They have the zipper up the side, which makes it, makes it a lot easier for getting on and over hip boots um, or waders. So this kind of an option may be the style that you're looking for, especially if you're going on a climbing hunt here in Alaska where you're having to hike for your goats or your sheep. Something like that is going to be perfect because it's going to be lightweight. It's going to keep you dry. Um, while you're going and then too while you're climbing you don't have overheat as bad a lot of times when we're climbing if it's not wet out we'll take our rain shells and everything over because these can make you sweat a little but if it's cold and wet then they can they can help with that it's just that combination of putting a lot of work into going after an animal and getting hot and then the rain coat these shells really can hold in the heat at times so you may need to take some extra little breaks in between to keep from overheating or just make the the curl to take it off and then be able to put it on later whenever you get to where you're going but for our hunts we aren't hiking so this is not really what i would suggest um if you're the kind of person that you just have the the thinner shell it's perfect it's fine it'll work I know a lot of the Sika and the Kuyu and stuff, they're kind of more on this line of the thinner ring gear that I see clients bringing, and it's okay. But um, do I think it's necessarily the best for what we do? I don't necessarily think so. Whenever you, whenever we say it rains in Alaska, it, it can rain like all day, just showers kind of all throughout the day off and on or it can absolutely pour and it seems like more or less whenever it rains it pours or it's just a steady rain all day and then you're completely soaked where something like this i think this one's actually made by hallie hansen it is hallie hansen and grundens both have some rubberized rain gear which is great um, it is really great for setting in a skiff and tooling around and the rain just coming down on you. So you're not going anywhere. It may be, this one is not too bad heavy, um, but some of them will be more heavier of the rubberized. So just depending upon what you're doing, what you care for. Um, but you're, like I said, you're setting in a skiff. It's better to have something that's absolutely going to propel the water off of you then you're just going to get soaked all day by it just little by little by little coming in um, so i highly suggest the rubberized rain gear now i do get it that a lot of people say that they're never going to use the rubberized or need it again so again it's by your choice your preference of what you want to invest your money in you're putting a lot of money into these hunts so putting that little extra uh, bit into uh, the proper gear is going to make for a more successful happier more enjoyable hunt so and especially if it rains so take a look at the rubberized rain gear for sure and with the rubberized rain gear then you have some options for pants you can have pants i have pants that match this again not here with me but um so they make the the pants and that match the rubberized rain gear you can also get uh, bibs that are rubberized like that and then here is also another style of Grendon's bibs um, they're a little thicker than the thinner shell but um, they're like a different material than let me see if I can quickly tell what they are made from so this is a nylon so this is a nylon it to be honest with you, I feel like whenever you have nylon, if they're not really properly sewn at the, the seams, this one is really good. You can see that they've got the good waterproof taping that they've done on all the seams. And this is made for fishing. So this is the heavy duty, what the fisheries use. So you know that the quality of the Grundens is good. 
Be careful though, whenever you're looking at rain gear and this, look at the stitching work. Look at the back side of the stitching and see if the seams are really taped off good with waterproofing. Uh, if they're not, they're gonna leak and you don't want it leaking. But these are a great um, suggestion for, for some waterproofing kind of a shield cover for your outside layer. Now with this, they can be great because they do have the suspenders, the bib style. Like I enjoy having a bib style, but women and men take into consideration, they're going to be a pain in the butt to get to. If you're out hunting and this is your top layer for the day, then they may not be so bad to get off and take on if you've got to take a restroom break. Men, I would definitely suggest looking for bibs that have the zipper up here. Um, trust me, it is worth the extra money that you'll put into the zipper to make your hunt just more enjoyable. For women, unfortunately, there's no good way to go about it. They're going to be a pain in the butt to get off if you're going to have extra layers on top. And with the majority of the days, especially coming into fall, you're probably going to um, have a majority of layers. So. Having pants instead of bibs may be easier for you. Just kind of put that into consideration whenever you're checking out your gear is what is going to be the easiest to get on and go to all. Now, we're gonna get into some coats. Now, knowing that you may have your bibs or your rain pants, then having some coats. This coat right here, uh, it's actually made by a company that Wright and McGill Company. Essentials and associate accessories, WM. So I don't have my, um, I meant to bring also my uh, Grendon's gauge coat. It looks almost identical to this guy's. It's very similar. It's made of the same kind of nylon material. It's great quality. This is a great quality coat as well. I will tell you, they're not as heavy duty as having the rubber, again, for your top layer. Um, this coat, though, it's a little bit more fashionable, I guess you could say, usable. Um, I can see, I use my gauge uh, rain coat, my top layer like this, all the time. Like during the fall season, before winter really gets here, when I'm just out and about in town too, I will put it on. If I'm out guiding, I have it on, obviously. But it's just more transitional from in the field to out of the field and usable every day. So if you're gonna put money, you know, a couple hundred dollars into a coat, that might be something that you want. You would rather spend instead of the hundred dollars for the rubberized or a little over a hundred dollars, maybe you wanna put a, a little bit more money into it and have it something that you're gonna wear all the time. Again, this is just suggestions, giving you examples of what it is, something to think about whenever it comes to your gear. What could you use it for on other times? If you're coming to plan, uh, if you're planning on coming to hunt with us again in Alaska, then you're gonna use all this stuff again. So investing in what you really feel like is the better quality, gonna give you the most comfortable, is great. If you do a lot of duck hunting, then you may have jackets that are already set up that are thicker and heavier and waterproof that you're like, I can just bring one of those. So don't think that you have to go out and buy a whole brand new wardrobe to go hunting with us or here in Alaska. Um, but these are just things that we would suggest you think about um, and look into. But especially something like this top shield, it's gonna be heavier duty than the thinner layer for sure. Um, it's just not as bulky, I would say, as the rubberized but it really gives you the ability that like we were talking about with the, um, the synthetic kind of comforter style uh, mountain hardware coat. If you're putting one of those on, then you something like this is a great option of being able to add that layer into if you don't really need something more heavier than this. Now we're going to get into this bad boy. This one right here, this is not made by the Cabela's uh, guide coat, but it's a very similar style to the Cabela's guide coat. Um, they are fully lined. They've got extra windbreaker in here. They're waterproof. They're heavy duty. So these right here, this style of coat is really great for being able 
to have as your top layer. It can go over your rain pants or your bibs. This really is going to block out the water. It's going to repel. It's going to be waterproof, but it's also going to give you some extra warmth. So if you're a person that gets really cold, these are great. You will see Greg and I wearing these all the time in the field because whenever you're sitting there, it does get a little cooler than uh, normal. But they're easy to pull off too if you need. You don't have to have as many layers that way if you don't like a whole lot of layering system. For me, I still use my layers, but I still use this as my top coat. Um, and I do typically. I'm kind of a more petite woman and I get colder. So think about something like this. This is right along the lines of if you are duck hunting and you want a heavy coat for your duck hunting. You're sitting there in a blind, think. You're sitting in a skiff. You gotta think. It's going to get colder whenever you're not up and moving. And then whenever it's that go time, you can take it off whenever you're taking pictures and being able to um, check out your goat and stuff like that or your bear or whatever you're chasing after. So um, also along with the rain gear if you've got bibs again here are some waders they will be your very last um, layer you can also layer some other stuff on here but think about these we prefer hip boots um, by we I mean Greg and I do by far there's a whole other video on why we choose the hip boots that we do and why we don't wear waders. For me personally, I feel like the waders are constricting. Um, and they're just a pain in the butt to me. They are lighter than hip boots, but for me personally, the hip boots are by far the way to go. I'm, again, if I can wear hip boots to the truck and do whatever we need to do, any of you coming can do it. They're easier to maneuver. Uh, the hip boots that we suggest to are the little cross big chiefs. Um, again, go check out that video when it comes to layering up on your boots. We can do a whole nother video on other styles of boots too. That um, that would be a good a good video. So you've got all of your your gear basically. You've got your um, base layer. You've got a second layer. If you want a synthetic kind of third coat layer in there. You can go the route that we talked about with the mountain hardware gear and you're going to want your base layer. So really in all, you just really need those three layers, your base layer, a second layer of some type of fleece, I would suggest, and then your rain gear, whether that be the um, heavy duty coats, the lighter, rubberized, whatever in there but three layers for sure, and then go from there of what you feel like is gonna make you the most uncomfortable. And you can even keep those extra layers like we talked about um, in your bag, so that if you do decide that you need more than the three layers, you can kind of add on and you can take off. So next is going to be gloves. I like to have a thinner pair of gloves. These right here are I would say a mid kind of grade glove. They're made by Arteric. I really enjoy these. They're waterproof. They're nice and warm. They fit very well to my hand though. I still will not shoot in this glove. I'm going to pull it off to shoot. You can do more of a shooting style glove, a, a very fitted to your hand profile glove. That's fine. And even during the day, whenever it's sunny out, I will wear those a lot of times in the springtime. For more in the fall, I'm either going to have the mid-grade glove on to a ski glove. Now the ski glove, again, needs to be waterproof. And we love mittens because, again, you can have that smaller kind of um, shooting profile glove on and be able to stick right into these. And then whenever you pull them off, you've already got a glove on your hand. That works great. Uh, some people like and don't mind shooting with a glove on. Some people absolutely can't stand it. So whether you're the person that loves it or hates it, that depends on. But being able to have some kind of extra glove because you can even wear just a thinner profile, still maybe will not shoot with it, but you will um, you'll be able to take it in and out very easily. 
out of these. These are really great. So having really good, nice, fluffy, thick, um, large mittens are great for setting in this gift. They're absolutely great. Whenever it comes to getting up and moving around and everything on the beach, then you're probably gonna want something with more of your hand profile than just a mitten. But these are the way to go to keep you nice and warm. Um, and then last that we're gonna go over is some kind of um, some kind of hat. You're gonna want to make sure that you can protect your ears and keep your heat in your body um, from your head. So either some kind of just beanie. This one happens to be a Carhartt. Um, Mountain Hardware makes some nice beanies that we have. We have them from Patagonia. They just some type of headwear. So here's another one. This is another favorite of mine. It is a fleece hat from uh, Carhartt, but it has the face shield built into it. So it's really nice that you can put it on and be able to pull this down. And especially whenever you're heading somewhere and you got to get there fast in the skip, you can pull this up over and really cover up your face and it keeps you nice and warm. Whenever you don't necessarily need that, it folds up into the hat really well and gives you just a really nice head covering um, without the face mask down. And then here is one from Mountain Hardware. This is the hat style. So if you're the kind of person that you really love a cap, um, you may really enjoy these. They're more of like a knit kind of version. Um, they have the fleece lining in the inside, so it's really nice and comfortable and not itchy at all. So this is another, uh, gives you the bill to be able to keep your eye really everything out of your face whenever you go to shoot or whenever you're glassing. So this gives you a really good layer, um, or gives you a really good option for layering. And you want some really great socks. I would highly suggest something not cotton, obviously. Uh, Fox River makes some really great socks that I use personally, and I buy for Greg as well. So you can go in, they are expensive, uh, whenever you're looking at, you know, between $10, $20 for a pair of socks, it's kind of crazy. But think of these as socks that you will be able to keep and use for years. I mean, I've had some of my socks for 10 years now and I use them during guide season and I store them away with my guide gear so I know that my heavy duty socks are in there and they're put away. And um, they don't, they have really good, if you're the kind of person that wears holes in your socks, they've got a good warranty on them. Um, and trust me, if Greg can't wear holes in them, then I just don't think anybody hardly can because he's pretty tough on, on gear. And um, so Fox River, is a really good company to look into but it, any basic um, heavy duty kind of warm weather or cold weather I should say sock will do you really well um, and that's about it guys you know there's lots that we can go into with gear we could be here all day and I could pull out tons of more totes of gear but this is just a really good general layer ring system that I think will give you really good ideas. There are lots of name brands out there that can get very expensive. We have a lot of them, but we use a lot of this, um, you know, gear, clothing all throughout our winter here in Alaska because here in Fairbanks being 30 below, 40 below, 50 below is not uncommon at all. You know, we spend a lot of the winter between 20 and 30 below here in Fairbanks. So I have a lot of the companies like Patagonia. They make some great layering systems too that you can kind of put in with this stuff. But just being able to um, be well geared for your hunt will make for, trust me, a much more comfortable, successful, enjoyable hunt. And while you're looking um, at hunting gear, if you're looking for a place to go hunt, we'd love for you to choose to come hunt with us at Grizzinator. We specialize in yacht-based brown bear, um, sick blacktail, black bear, and mountain goats. And those are low gift-based mountain goats. So you live aboard our 80-foot uh, yacht during the duration of the hunts. The St. Marina has beautiful accommodations. You get home-cooked meals. 
and you get an excellent guide service with all of that. So we are your personal guides when you're out there in the field and here to help you along the way from the time you book to being in the field with you. So if you have any questions about any of this gear or um, if you have questions about our hunts, get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. And we look forward to those of you that are watching this to help prepare for your upcoming hunt. We'll see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.